channel. My name is Emma Anglin and we have been reading through my book, Team Captain Alexander Dodson. In our last chapter, in chapter whatever, <laughs> in our last chapter in chapter ten, Alex and Tej meet Danielle, who has a strong reaction to Tajay. After addressing her rude comments towards Tajay, Alex invites Danielle to join the team, but finds out she has to pass her two mile test in another twenty five minutes. If she doesn't, the entire team will not be able to become active agents. Upon learning that they need a pilot for the team, Danielle takes them to introduce them to Emily. And with that, let's get on to chapter 11. These are the simulators for the first years. Danielle stood back and let Alex and Tage walk into the room of simulators. Her eyes never left Tage. Alex rolled his eyes. Danielle needed to get past this thing she had against grudges, but he'd have to tackle it some other day. Right now, he wandered into the simulator room Danielle had led him to. Although equally as large as the one on the 25th floor, this room had less machines occupying it. Each machine sported a lighter gray metal and had no hydraulic lifts to move them. They only rocked back and forth. And the noise, compared to the other place, the clangs and bangs made by these machines seemed like poetry. But what did Tajay think of it? Alex glanced at him. Tajay swiveled his head around, his ears trained back and forth. He took a deep breath, relaxed his shoulder, and exhaled a sigh. Tajay approved. The first year it had trouble getting in to use the other simulator rooms because the older agents kept pushing them out, so they made this one for them. Danielle took her eyes off Tajay long enough to glance at her data hub. These machines aren't as good, but they work for training. Ah, here we go. Simulator number 24. She headed towards it. Alex glanced at a monitor as he followed Danielle. The pilot had crashed into a planet upon takeoff. The ship burst into flames. Can these pilots fly? They have to pass a space flight test before they can get a pilot's designation on their profiles. Plus, this is the advanced flight classes. There it is. Danielle leaned on the stanchions run one simulator in the middle of the room. Emily's in this one. Alex watched the monitor above the simulator. A young girl with brown hair engaged in battle in an asteroid field. No sound came out of the monitor's speakers, but Alex saw her yelling and slamming buttons on the console. He turned up his nose. Old technology, huh? The simulators of newer ships use a digital display and had virtually no buttons, switches, or dials to push, turn, or flip. Maybe the agency employed older model ships. Or maybe... Alex leaned in close to watch. Maybe the agency taught their trainees on older technology to increase their skills. Data Hub. Tache held out his hand to Alex. Alex handed over his data hub without taking eyes off the monitor. Tache looked from the monitor to the data hub and back again. It worked. What worked? Alex shoved his head between the crook of Tajay's arm so he could see what Tajay was looking at. That data hub displayed a view of Emily's control panel. They saw her push every button and flip every switch. Nice, Taj. Now we can see exactly what she's doing. You can do that with your own data hub, you know, Tajay. Danielle crossed her arms. We all get one standard issue. He forgot his in his room or something. Alex kept watching the screen through Tajay's arm. It's not a big deal to share mine. It is a big deal, though. Danielle tapped her foot on the floor. Team Captain's data hub come with extra functionality, including the ability to display other members' data, which should not be put in just anyone's hands. It's a violation of privacy. I won't tell anyone if you don't. That's not the point. Tajé isn't going to look at anyone's personal information. Alex waved his hands in dismissal. Now relax, you worry too much. Danielle growled in her throat. The machine jolted. Alex swung around to the monitor in time to see Emily's ship explode. Mission failed, flashed on the screen. And underneath it, her flight record for the mission appeared. Zero out of twenty-four. Twenty-four? Alex's eyes bugged out of his head. She's failed this mission twenty-four times in a row? Danielle flinched. Not pretty. Alex gaped at Danielle. This is the pilot you want to join our team? I've never seen her fly before. Danielle rubbed the back of her neck. She's my roommate. So not only do you think you should get on a team using favoritism, you think everyone else should too? That's not it at all. Danielle bit her lip. I was trying to help her out. I'll pass. Alex grunted in disgust. Let's go, Tash. He headed to the door. You don't have to be so mean about it. Danielle crossed her arms. It's not my fault she stinks. Alex nodded to himself. So, Danielle was a type to blame others for her mistakes, huh? Yet another thing he'd have to address. Tajay caught Alex's hand and pulled him to a halt. Hey! Alex yanked his hand out of Tajay's. You nearly jerked my arm out of the socket. Why'd you do that? 
Tajay pointed to the simulator. One of the trainers opened it. You died again, Joyce. You and your entire team. Let me have another chance, said a young voice. I know what to do this time. All right, the trainer closed the simulator. Alex turned to Tajay. You want to watch her fly again? Tajay nodded. Fine. Alex leaned on Tajay as if he were a wall. Judging by her last attempt, I doubt it will go any differently. Tajay grunted. The simulator reset itself. The mission's parameters scrolled by on the monitor. Alex scanned them. Essentially, Emily had to get her ship, her cargo, and her crew from one planet to another by performing a drive jump. Simple enough. Alex watched her initiate the takeoff sequence and exit the atmosphere without any trouble. Fine, but those were basic flight techniques. A trained monkey could do it. Once in orbit, she started the calculations for the drive jump. Most of the spaceships available had drive jump technology. A good jump allowed ships to travel large distances in moments, but it required proper, precise calculations. Any mistake could cause a ship to crash into a moon, planet, asteroid, or comet at super light speed. Emily made the calculations without too much trouble. Alex nodded. Good, good. Emily turned her ship's nose to the ideal jump coordinates. Come on, Tajay snorted. He tapped the data hub screen and watched it. He tapped it again and growled. What are you doing? Alex rested his hand on his cheek. It's not like you to get upset so quickly. It won't work. Tajay shook the data hub. Don't do that. Alex snatched it. You'll break it. What are you trying to do? No sound. Hmm. Alex rubbed his chin. A beard started to grow in. He'd have to shave in the afternoon. Hey, Danielle. You're a tech specialist, right? Help us out? He handed it to her. Danielle screwed her mouth into a pout. She sniffed, snatched the data hub from his hands, tapped it a few times, and held it towards him. She didn't spare him a glance. Roger that, Captain, came Emily's voice from the speakers. Great job, Danielle. Alex took the data hub back. Thank you. Danielle let a smile tug at her mouth. She didn't let it overtake her face, though. Alex nodded to himself, so she liked to be complimented. Good to know. We're ready to go. Emily's voice interrupted his thoughts. Alex looked up at the monitor. While Danielle had been fixing the sound, Emily had made it to the jump coordinates. Drive engines will engage in three, two... The simulator shuddered. A blast tore from the dugout speakers. An attack from behind. Are you kidding? Again? Why won't they leave me alone? Emily pushed buttons and flipped switches all over her console. Red alert! Alex turned his gaze from the screen to the data hub. In a situation like this, procedure dictated Emily should put the crew on alert to deploy their automatic pressure suits. Afterwards, she should hide the ship, run, or fight, depending on the captain's orders. Alex chuckled to himself. So much for simple mission parameters. According to the readout on Emily's screen, an Imperial ship, Aegon class, had locked onto her. Alex clenched his teeth. Aegon-class battleships outclass any starship in the agency's registry. Stronger, faster, more firepower, and more maneuverability. He nodded. Smart simulation. He threw a curveball at what should have been a simple mission. Now, how would Emily handle this? A simulated feminine voice said, Captain, the enemy vessel is not responding to our request for communication. That must have been the protocol director. They'd handle something like that. They've locked onto us, Emily said. The simulator lurched forward. Another hit. Emily jolted in her seat. Major breach on the port side. Emily reached across her control panel to hit a button. Locking it down. Captain! She glanced at a monitor on her panel. Crap, already? Alex caught sight of what Emily had seen. A status bar, depicting the medical status of all crew on board or out in the field. The captain had fallen unconscious. So now the real test started. Alex pressed his lips together. Seeing the captain unavailable... Emily should take orders from the first officer. According to the status bar, he had fallen unconscious too. In fact, all the crew had dropped out, either unconscious or incapacitated. Alex stroked his chin. The best plan, according to protocol, required Emily to jettison the cargo to lighten the vessel and run. However, Aiken-class ships could easily catch them. Emily had another option. The official agency escape pods design allowed them to drop onto the crew wherever they stood in emergency situations. If the crew happened to be in an inaccessible position, the ship could automatically deploy robot arms to move them to a better position. Then the pods could move themselves to the nearest exit and jettison them into space. Each pod could then be controlled by the crew member inside, or, if the crew was unconscious, by any conscious member of the crew with proper authorization, such as the captain or the ship's pilot. 
This had to be her next move. Alex scanned the monitors and Emily's control panel. The enemy was hot on her tail, but she made no move to launch the pods. Alex's mouth dropped. Was she trying to outrun them? She couldn't be serious. No agency ship could outrun an Aegon class battleship, not unless they use a drive engine. She wouldn't try it, would she? Alex glanced at her controls. She could do it, but no, the enemy hovered too close. By the time she fired the engines, they would have already shot her down. She had to jettison the crew. Jettison, jettison! Okay, time to outrun these turkeys. Emily clenched her teeth. Drive engines, engage! She hit the button right as the enemy shot a charge blast. Those drive engines took at least two seconds to fire. Alex glanced at the engine readouts and then the enemy's shot. He clenched his teeth. What would happen first? The ship jolted. The drive engines! They kicked in just in time, or not quite. The Emily's shot collided with the ship's tail. Alarms went off in the cockpit. Navigation offline crap! Emily slammed some buttons on her control panel. I don't have any steering. Okay, I think I'm in line to make it to the Terran system before I have to brake. Her hand hovered over the emergency brake button, but her eyes remained glued to her readouts. My momentum should take me... The ship lurched to a stop. Emily tumbled head over heel in her chair. What happened? She pulled herself up. She checked the readout and gasped. No! The ship drifted in the middle of empty space. Stars burned in the distance. The enemy did not appear on screen, but neither did anything else. No planet, no moon, no sun. Only stars in the distance and a comet to the port side. Oh, come on! Emily slammed her fists on her panel. I thought I disabled the emergency auto brake. I could have made it to the tearing system before I hit the moon. According to the navigation computer, the ship had stopped one light year away from their destination. Alex released his held breath. He too glanced at the readouts. The automatic braking system had stopped the ship from plunging headlong into a moon a few miles away, a safety measure inputted in the drive engines in case of emergency. At the rate Emily had been going, the ship's momentum would have hurtled her into the moon in a matter of seconds. Alex tapped his finger against his arm. So, plan A failed, Emily. What was plan B? Emily lifted her head. Okay, let's get these engines restarted. She turned a knob. Nothing. No, 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 no! Start! Engines, please start! She tried it again and again. Nothing. No! Emily rested her head on the console. A message appeared on the monitor screen. Crew survival impossible. Mission failed. Well, Alex straightened his shirt. Stranded in space without use of the engines. The crew would either suffocate, freeze, or starve. Not a pleasant way to die. He halted when he noted Danielle staring at him. What? You were surprisingly into that. Danielle jerked her thumb at the monitor. Ah, no! Alex waved her off. Danielle caught his hand. She turned it over so his palm faced up. Red marks showed up all over them. That's how hard you were gripping the dividers. Alex shook out his hands. It doesn't mean a thing. Right. Danielle eyed him. Let's go. Alex turned to leave. I want her. Taje pointed to Emily's face on the monitor. Huh? Alex glanced at him, then Emily. Wait, you want her on our team? Taje nodded. She crashed twice in the last 20 minutes. Alex waved his hands toward the simulator. Why would you want her? Taje opened his mouth to speak. He closed it again. His shoulders slumped. What's the matter, big guy? Alex crossed his arms. Too long of an explanation? Taje nodded. Alex studied him. You really want her on the team? Taje nodded. Are you sure about this, Taj? Alex narrowed his eyes. Look me in the eye and answer. Taj leaned in close. He stared into Alex's eyes. Yes, he said without blinking or looking away. Alex studied his face. All right, then. Wait, that's it? Danielle said. Yep. Alex tapped the data hub to get out of the simulator's screen. You're taking his word for it without even an explanation? Taj doesn't talk if he can help it. Alex cupped a hand over his mouth. I'm convinced the sound of his voice scares him. He swiped the screen. Here we go. Invitation sent. To accept his opinion in such an important decision without a word of explanation. Danielle put her hands on her hips. You could have had him write it down. I could have. Alex used his data hub to point to himself. But there's one thing you should know about me, Danny. Danny? I trust my team members. Alex pointed at her with the data hub. If you make it becoming an active member with us, 
You'll have to earn my trust as well. Understood? Danielle blinked. She nodded. Good. Alex looked at his data home. Looks like this thing is scheduling us to meet tomorrow. Danielle checked the time. Sunset is almost here. They want non-active members to be in the barracks at night. It gets cold on this planet, sub-freezing temperatures even in summer. They really coddle their recruits around here. Alex stretched. Probably for the best. I'd keep training all night if I could. Danielle nodded. Oh, so you're one of those. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. Okay. Alex cracked his neck. No use picking another argument today. We'll meet at the scheduled meeting place tomorrow. Have a good night, Danielle. Tash? Tajay joined Alex and walked out. They left Danielle alone in the simulator room. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, please like and subscribe and comment. And you can share it with somebody who you think would like these stories as well. If you want to pick up the book, the link will be in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!